Hello everyone, I'm Petros and this is a tutorial on recursion. So, what is recursion? Recursion in computer science is uh, when a function calls itself within its body. An example of recursion is the computation of uh, the factorial of a number. So, if we want to compute the factorial of 4, we have to compute the factorial of 3 and the factorial of 2 and finally the factorial of 1. Something that uh, we should always keep in mind is that when using recursion, we have to make sure that recursion ends at some point. So, if we didn't have the definition of uh, the factorial that the factorial of 1 equals to 1 and tried to compute the factorial of 3, we will see that uh, this computation will never end. So, let's try and uh, implement the factorial of a number as a recursive function in Python. By definition, we know that uh, the factorial of a number x equals to x times the factorial of x minus 1 and uh, the factorial of 1 equals to 1. So, this is our recursive function fact of x and uh, let's do some tests. So, the factorial of 1 is 1, which is correct. The factorial of 4 is 24, which is correct. But, what about the factorial of 0? 1. The factorial of minus 12? That's also 1, which is incorrect. Uh, we know that uh, the factorial is defined only for numbers greater than 1. So, we have to add a new conditional here, saying that uh, if our number x is uh, less than or equal to 0, uh, we print a message saying that there was an invalid input. So I think that now our function is correct. Next we will look at an example that is a little bit more difficult than uh, computing the factorial of a number. The Tower of Hanoi problem is a mathematical puzzle uh, that consists of uh, three rods and a number of disks of different sizes. Uh, the puzzle starts with the disks in a stack in ascending order of size. The objective of uh, the puzzle is uh, to move the entire stack to another road obeying three simple rules. Only one disk can be moved at a time. Each move consists of taking the upper disk from one of the stacks and placing it on top of another stack and finally no disk may be placed on top of a smaller disk. It can be proved that uh, the optimal solution consists of uh, 2 to the power of n minus 1 moves, where n is the number of disks. The recursive solution we'll uh, implement is the one shown at uh, the site of Wikipedia. So, our uh, recursive function will uh, move n disks from uh, one peg to another. Uh, let's call that function uh, move. This function will need uh, four arguments. The first one, which is called n, is the number of disks we want to move. The start, uh, the start argument is uh, the starting peg. Uh, is, uh, it is the peg where uh, all the disks are located initially. Dest is the destination peg and using is the third peg that uh, is used whenever you need to move a big disk and uh, this cannot be done uh, we know that we cannot uh, place a big a bigger disk on top of a smaller one so if uh, there is only one uh, disk to, to move, the solution is trivial. Just uh, move this disk from start to destination. 
uh, if we if we have uh, uh, n that is uh, greater than one, then uh, we have to move n minus one disks from start to the using to the so-called using peg. Then we move the last, the biggest disk from uh, start to destination, and finally we move the n minus one uh, disks from the using peg to the destination. So this is uh, the recursive function, but uh, in order to solve the problem, we have to call the recursive function. So. We need another uh, function which we will call annoy and uh, it will simply call uh, the recursive function. So here h is the height of the tower of annoy which means the number of disks and uh, the only thing we need to do is uh, say that we want to move h disks from peg A, the starting peg to peg C the destination uh, using peg B for the for the transfer. So let's see if this works. For uh, one disk the solution is trivial. Move one disk from A to C. For two disks the solution requires three steps. Move one disk from A to B. Move the second the big one from A to C and finally move the small disk from B to C. For three disks the solution requires seven steps. I have to remind you here that uh, the optimal solution requires 2 to the power of n minus 1 moves. So for three disks this is seven seven steps, seven moves. So, uh, what will happen if we try to call annoy with a negative argument or with a zero argument? Uh, it doesn't make sense to have zero or minus one disks. So, in that case, we will just print the message saying that this is not acceptable. Okay, and uh, let's try that. So, annoy with zero disks. It says number of disks should be greater than zero. Okay, but then uh, we also compute the trivial solution, which is wrong. So, let's uh, fix that uh, error by just using uh, the else clause. Ok, now it works better. Let's uh, try it for a negative number. Ok. So, let's see the solution for 7 disks. Okay, there is, uh, we can see that there are a lot of steps involved in uh, solving the problem with uh, seven disks. So, how many steps? We can find out if we print the um, 2 to the power of 7 minus 1, which is 127 moves. If we have 8 disks, 255 moves. If we use 10 disks, we need about 1000 moves. And uh, if we have 20 disk, disks, we need about 1 million moves. So, what will happen if we try to compute the solution for 20 disks? So, uh, we said earlier that uh, when using recursion we must make sure that 
recursion edge at some point and uh, this is uh, true for our uh, for our function but we haven't said that uh, recursion is very powerful but also very uh, memory consuming it consumes a lot of memory because each time a recursive call is made uh, the arguments and the local variables of the recursive function are, are stored in the memory because uh, when the recursive function ends uh, we need the previous values uh, of uh, of the arguments and the local variables so each time a recursive, fun a recursive call is made the previous values are stored and next and, and it goes on uh, to the number of uh, the recursive functions we uh, the recursive calls we have so if we need to make one million recursive calls in order to to solve the problem uh, we will have to store in the memory uh, one million times four because we have four arguments in our function which means about four million variables well, this is uh, a big number of variables and uh, if we try to uh, solve the problem for an even bigger number, then uh, at some point we will be out of memory and something uh, will happen. So, what we want to do here is to limit the number of uh, uh, recursive calls made by our program and uh, to do that we will just limit the number of disks that uh, for which we can uh, solve the problem so let's say that we will only accept up to 8 disks uh, if someone tries to call our function uh, for more than 8 disks then we will print a message informing him that the maximum number is 8 and uh, let's try if that works so 8 disks uh, sorry uh, 20 disks ok 9 disks ok too many disks 8 disks it works because it's our upper limit so this is the end of uh, my tutorial I hope you liked it and uh, see you next time